She's basically Nar as a mage. Why wouldn't I play her? At least that's what I told my friends when I first saw the champion. She has a mechanic no other champion has. She's annoying as hell to fight in lane. She uses a 3 hit passive to kite, and she can shit on people in team fights with an amazing ult. All four of these things, on top of the fact that I love playing immobile mages because I'm a masochist, made me want to play her. On release, I thought this champion was going to be insane and that it'd be impossible to get out of champ select, but just like Nar, she fell off the face of the earth. Hell dude, even Anivia is above her and I haven't seen that champion in months. So I wanted to give you my guide to Nika. Inherent Glamour is Nico's passive, which allows you to transform into any champion on your team, letting you look like them, make clones of them, and hide your ultimate animation. Most people only use this ability for that last point, but I think there is a lot more to her passive than people actually give credit. League of Legends is a game that requires a lot of thought, to most of us anyway. The issue that most players have when they are trying to improve is that there is too much information to track. Where is the jungler? What level was he when he used TP? Who just used Flash in that last fight? Where the hell is Nico? It's just one more thing that the enemies have to think about, and that's important. If you're playing Nico well, the enemies should fear every single clone you throw at them. If they have to move brain cells towards figuring out where the hell the real Nico is, they can't be thinking as much about the game. To make this ability a little easier to use, if you have mouse buttons like me, you can bind champion-specific action to make transforming faster. I only have two mouse buttons, so by default I have the third action because it's usually the AD carry which can be used to bait spells out easily, and I have the fifth action which actually transforms you back and forth between your top laner and Nika. If you are fast enough at hitting the number 5 action before getting hit or using an ability, you can effectively have a 2 second cooldown on your passive. Now I know that I just spent most of that saying that this ability was great and that you should spam it all the time, but there are still a ton of bugs that make it almost unusable with certain champions. Jin's ammo doesn't change, Annie doesn't have stun charges, MF holds her guns wrong, Aatrox holds his sword wrong, Kha'Zix doesn't have evolutions, Jace is always melee, Nidalee and Elise are always ranged, Nara is always mini but with melee range, Kale is always at the first level of her passive, Skarl's health bar on Kled is a different color, DJ Sona is bald, Aphelios T poses the moment the real one changes to a new weapon, and there's a bunch more that I probably forgot. Some of these can actually be used pretty well because they're super distracting, but most of the time you just have to kind of play with only 4 out of 5 disguises available. Jesus, it took 2 entire minutes to talk about the passive. Nico's Q is the main source of damage in the early game, a circular explosion that can repeat up to 3 times if it either kills a unit or hits a champion. This ability does almost everything. It's good for harassing, it's good for last hitting, and it's good for wave clear. Nico's W is another underrated part of her kit because it's very similar to the passive. All it does is make you invisible and send a clone to walk straight towards wherever you clicked. Even though Riot removed the ability to block skill shots with it, it still has a ton of uses. You can avoid ganks by sending the clone towards your tower and yourself literally anywhere else, and as long as you only right click once and they aren't idiots, you should be free to go. The second time they gank, if they even try after being humiliated, you just do the complete opposite, sending your clone to the bush. This means that every single gank they try on you is now a coin flip. You can cancel any long targeted animation, which at first seems pretty specific, until you realize that you can cancel enemy auto attacks. They cannot attack you for the entire duration of the invisibility plus their attack speed if timed perfectly, which means that champions who auto attack super slow can't really hit you. The last one is pretty much related only to the clone. If you aim it at a wall, you can actually make it move around corners, which is an easy way to instantly make people think that your clone is real. 
The only issue with this is that it's inconsistent, and sometimes the clone just does whatever the hell it wants. The E is just your mage standard straight line skill shot that can single handedly kill a champion. Everything that gets hit is rooted, but more importantly everything after the first target is rooted for longer. The empowered root at level 1 is enough to guarantee you all 3 hits of your Q, which makes trading in lane super easy if you can land it. The skill shot also increases in size after the first target, which actually catches a lot of people off guard. Just like most of these mages I mentioned earlier, you can flash during the casting animation of your CC. This makes the ability way less reactable, and is a good way to catch off opponents. You also get bonus points if you can manage to do this with a minion just barely in between you and the target. Nico's ultimate is probably one of the most impactful abilities in the game, deciding entire team fights on whether or not you land it. After a brief period of showing enemies where your ult will land, Nico jumps up into the air, shielding herself for a crap load, and then hits that entire area with the fattest AP scaling the game has seen. This ability cannot be cancelled, so you don't have to worry about crowd control like other mages. However, unlike other mages, you have to land this ability by going in. There are a lot of different things you can do to help with that downside though. You can disguise yourself or use your W to make yourself invisible. This will hide the wind up warning area of the ultimate until Nico jumps up into the air. You can use any item before or during the wind up, like GLP to slow their escape or protobelt to bring yourself more forward. And similar to that, you can use summoner spells before or during the wind up, which pairs incredibly well with Nimbus Cloak. Lastly, you can also use Predator. When you are using these things during the windup, they should be as close to the jump as possible so that the enemies have very little time to react. This requires a bit of practice with timing, but once you have it down, everything else just comes naturally. Proto Belt is the way I currently build Nico. This build is the best way to use Nico if you want to make the enemy team fear for their lives. Once you have a Proto Belt, you want to be using it to spam roam all over the map. By that point in the game, your E and Q should one shot the caster minions, and the Proto Belt finishes off the melee ones. The second use for Proto Belt is engages. I already went over this a bit during the alt portion, but Proto Belt basically increases your alt range further than the enemies would expect. You can use this with many different runes, but I personally only run Comet because I value the sorcery runes more. Glacial Augment build is the most popular build for Nika because it allows you to give anyone without a dash the middle finger. This build turns Nico into one of the best utility mages in the game. Once you finish both core items, you can just run around slowing and rooting whoever dares not have flash up. I like to take this build against tanky teams because Nico's ultimate is a lot less powerful, and against immobile teams because then this build just gets you free kills. The only thing I hate is that you have to take it for The last AP build I'll mention is one of my favorites to play currently, Jungle Nico. The jungle clear is amazing once you have a few points into the queue, and the ganks are similar to that of Elise. Once you're at level 6, anything that you CC just dies, so you're probably asking why not pick Elise. You also have the option to farm hard like a hyper carry, once you have runic echoes you can clear the jungle fast enough to not have anything left to farm. After Runic Echoes, I like to go straight into Proto Belt, basically building the normal AP build with a jungle item. And once you have two or three items, you can just carry games straight up with your ultimate. You just gotta get to that point. Realistically, this build is only fun to me because it's different, and if you don't know much about me, I love being different. Everything I said before is true, this build can work, but you have to be careful. You are going to get invaded, and even though you can start chickens to get around this, they can still steal your buffs. Invading doesn't always happen at the start of the game, too, and you lose most 1v1s until level 6, so you're gonna need help from your lands if that happens. 
but in regards to that, you aren't playing a normal jungler, so your teammates are less likely to help you. This means that scuttle crabs are almost impossible if it turns into a 2v2, and dragon fights are almost impossible if your bot lane is losing. You have to accept all of these downsides to play this. To recap, for all three of these builds, you want to be playing to land your ultimate on as many people as possible, ideally landing it on carries, but you have to remember to not be too picky about when you pop it. Your job as AP Nico is to do damage, so if you're jacking up in the back lines waiting for the perfect ult, you're just screwing over your team. The cooldown is super low, so just throw it out. And then the last build. The one that scumbags came up with to abuse poor top laners in the dark ages. On hit Nico is a build that completely ignores the Q key in favor of maxing out W and E and focusing on auto attacks. Your ultimate is either used to self peel people or to wave clear as it's not even worth casting for damage when you could easily auto them instead. Your job in lane is to bully the enemy laner into submission with press the attack and then move into the late game as a pseudo AD carry with Blade and Quinsus. The strength of this build comes after those two items when you have a bunch of different routes to go. More attack speed is greedy but deals the most damage against tanky teams. Run-ins for example procs an empowered auto attack on every auto and Nashers or Wit's End makes your damage more AP focused. More AP allows you to start using the rest of your kit to some degree while still having your passive hit like a truck. Zonia's is good if you are already dealing enough damage and you desperately need to self peel with ult. More AD allows every auto to be threatening, this also makes you do more mixed damage than AP so it's harder to build defenses against you. Crit works with run-ins mentioned before and it's a good way to get your damage going, and GA is always a solid item for a carry. That's it for my Nico guide. I hope you all learned something even if you've played the champion before. I want to thank all of you subscribing early to my channel, even though some of you are only here for Nar or Zoe. You guys mean a ton to me. I want to make more guides in the future, roughly going down my mastery list with them, so if you have a guide you want in the future, let me know. Also, the item sets are in the description.